With our dual protagonists, we have two fantasy, the samurai and the shinobi. We want the player to experience both, and we cannot squeeze both fantasy into one character because uh, samurai and shinobi came from a different social class. They have different lives, so we cannot really uh, mix uh, them together. The historical character of Yasuke presented a really exciting opportunity for the narrative team. We approached it in the same way that uh, so much of the work is done in Assassin's Creed, which is really in terms of research and history first. Not a lot is known about him, but what we did know, or we do know, is that he arrived in Japan in 1579, right when our game starts and that he had relationships with some of the most interesting people in our setting, like Oda Nobunaga, the Portuguese and Jesuits, which made it very sort of tantalizing and enticing from a narrative perspective to come in and, and start weaving these facts with story in between. The more we read about the character, the more he was inspiring for us. He's a foreigner discovering Japan and we, we thought it's the perfect fit because he's discovering Japan and you are discovering Japan also. And on the flip side, we have Nawe who comes uh, from the province of Iga, which is a, a remote uh, mountainous area, fiercely independent, uh, known as the birthplace of Shinobi. So they're very contrasting perspectives that really expose a lot of different sides uh, and facets of the era. When Oda came, uh, he completely destroyed Iga. We have Yasuke and Oda that coming to destroy the shinobi. So it can kind of create this, this interesting tension between two characters. We were able to connect her to uh, the province of Iga and the legendary Igan shinobi historical figure, Fujibayashi Nagato, who's her, who's her father in the game. So we understand why she is, has the skills that she has and the values that she learns from her father in the people of Iga, which are valor, benevolence and, and wisdom. And as a young person still at the start of the game, we get to see now we acquire even more of that wisdom as the story unfolds. And if you ask anybody, it's super clear that Samurai will be combat heavy and a Shinobi will be stealth heavy. It creates this distinction right away. Yasuke uh, can fight with all his advantage, uh, his stature, like he's, he's a big guy. He can break door, he can fight multiple enemies, he can break armor. Compared to Naoe, like her character and their, their outfit, it's, it's really about being stealth, being unseen. She's the only one with the Eden Blade, so they have clear advantage that put them into the, the stealth and the combat, even if they can do a, a bit of both. They're a really great pair together because on one side uh, we have Nawe, who's very intense and passionate and, and determined woman who is very set on her goals. She's kind of got her heart on her sleeve and she'll say what she feels in the heat of the moment. And this intensity uh, that she brings as a shinobi, but that she also brings to her relationship. And this balances very well with Yasuke, who is sort of a, a thoughtful level head to Nawe's fiery passion. We really thought about somebody like Yasuke, historically, who was able to come to Japan and have the life that he did there to enter service for Oda Nobunaga and achieve all of the things that he did. Like, what kind of person would go through all of this? So our Yasuke is very uh, intelligent, thoughtful, and respectful of this culture that he encounters. And that makes him a very nice sort of counterpart to Nawe. He's a bit mysterious as well, and that's something we get to see unfold as the game progresses.